Hi, it's David McIntosh, the pediatric ENT doctor. I wanted to share two things uh, with you today. Uh, these both reflect on things that have come up in uh, consultations really over the past week or so as a very common question and observation. So I'm gonna do with the observation first. So the observation is that I noticed that my child when they're asleep has their head tipped back like so. And as soon as parents tell me that, the, my immediate response to them is, have you ever done a first aid course? And for those that have, uh, then I say, well, when you do mouth to mouth resuscitation, you tip the head back to open up the airway. And that's what your child's doing. So your child is basically doing first aid on themselves so they can breathe properly. And as soon as the parents put that together as two and two, that they're horrified that their child is actually that bad and they'd never realized that they were that bad. Now, I'm never critical of parents because you only know what you know. And once you know something though, you need to act and, and move forwards on it. And that brings me to the second thing, which is the comment or the question, uh, how long have we got? How long can we wait? And my answer to that's really simple. Uh, it's already too late. The child, if they are snoring, mouth breathing, stopping breathing at night, waking up tired, uh, grinding their teeth, uh, sleepwalking, sleep talking, having night terrors, having problems with their concentration, problems with their behavior, problems with their emotions, it's already too late because their brain is declaring that it is suffering. And we have plenty of research and plenty of evidence now with regards to uh, children that mouth breathe, children that snore, children that have sleep apnea. If we go and do brain scans, we go and look at the brain, the parts of the brain that deal with concentration, memory, behavior, they're all dysfunctional. Uh, we can actually see parts of the brain start to die off when they are not getting enough oxygen, which is what happens in kids. And the reason that it's far more important than kids than adults is uh, metabolically, so, so the amount of energy and activity that the brain undertakes, it is much, much higher in children than it is in adults. So children are much higher risk of having brain dysfunction, even from slight oxygen drops. It doesn't need to be much uh, that can cause a problem. So how long have we got? How long do we need to fix it? Uh, the research shows that that needs to be fixed within the next few weeks to months. Uh, not not years so if your child snores if they mouth breathe if they stop breathing at night if they sleep with their head arched and tipped back you've got some red flags there that you can't ignore and if healthcare professionals won't take you seriously then you need to find one that will because it is a serious problem and like everything in healthcare we don't know everything. Um, you can't ask me about diabetes or blood pressure, uh, heart disease, uh, and so forth, because that's not what I do. And likewise, it's impossible for every doctor to know everything. Even within ENT, uh, it's a, such a big specialty that it's not about seeing the ENT. It's about seeing the ENT that actually focuses on things like pediatrics, uh, that focuses on things like breathing ones that know and understand the links with uh, oral health and dentistry. And that's not everybody. Uh, so it's important to find the right person as well. Someone that will take you seriously, won't dismiss you, and will take the time to explain things to you. So that's my brief uh, review uh, with regards to some common themes. So again, I just thoroughly encourage you, go check your children at night. Look out for mouth breathing, snoring, stopping breathing at night. If they're waking up tired, there's a problem. If they're sleeping with their head, head arched back, there's a big problem. And they need to be fixed, and they need to be fixed quickly. Thanks, bye.